what I hope people will get from this is is to realize no matter what they are going through, no matter what they're in the middle of, God is bigger than your storm. He's bigger than your situation. And even at this moment, he's working in ways that, that, that you cannot see. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Song Revolution Podcast, brought to you by Nashville Christian Songwriters. Nashville Christian Songwriters exists to empower Christian songwriters worldwide. I'm John Chisholm, and this podcast exists to bring you valuable songwriting insights, inspiration, interviews, and just all-around good fun with some of the greatest songwriters, producers, arrangers, artists, and creatives, and beyond. You can find out a whole lot more about us at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com. Hey, you guys, thanks for joining me on the show. Always great to have you here with me. Listen, I want to ask you a question as we start today. And that question is, as you look back through your life, can you remember one, two, three, four, or more people who have really poured themselves so deeply into you? They've been so generous with themselves, their knowledge, their time. They've really invested in you that you would call them true mentors. Well, on today's show, I want to bring you one of mine. I've reached back into the archives to bring out Don Moen. Don, when I first got to know him, was the president of Integrity Music, and we worked together for about four years, managing songwriters, creating albums, traveling the world, teaching worship and songwriting writing and leading worship, and it was just a real highlight of my career. Don is a gentleman and a scholar and incredibly talented as a songwriter and worship leader. He literally has traveled the world. He has more million miler tags on his luggage than anybody else that I've ever run into in my whole life. He's performed around the world with people like Chris Tomlin, Twyla Paris, Sarah Groves, Paul Balash, Darlene Check, and Andrea Bocelli. He was recently inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, and we were there to celebrate him that evening and just so thankful and, and proud of this man, this man man of God, who is one of the greatest worship leaders I've ever known, and songwriters as well. And I've learned so much from Don. I just wanted to bring this episode back out in case you missed it or to let you enjoy it again. So take a few minutes with me today, and let's all learn something from a great mentor, a great coach, and my good friend, Don Moen. Don Good friend Don Moen, man. Welcome to the show. Hey, great to be with you. <laughs> Glad it worked out. Yeah, buddy. Thanks for just uh, jumping down here to meet me here at the yeah. uh, the space and just talk, man. It's so good to see you. You yeah. and I connected for the very first time in uh, 1991. <clears throat> yeah. I had left uh, the Gaithers organization mm-hmm. after seven years working as VP of Publishing God had really changed my heart from wanting to chase all the artists of the day with whatever song you know mm-hmm. we had in our in our hands yeah. to just I, I don't know how to call it anything other than a baptism in worship yeah and I had left star song and didn't know what I was going to do and then a month later I got a call from you yeah. and uh, Marty Nystrom who wrote as the deer who had been helping with the publishing there yeah. at integrity music in Mobile, Alabama, was yep. leaving, and you tapped me for that, man. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> like, guilty as charged. Changed my life, man, and and uh, that, that was that was a good. That was a really good ride for all of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it perfect? No, but uh, incidentally, I just had lunch uh, to about. Three weeks ago with Mike Coleman oh, okay. down in uh, Mobile. Yes. He and his wife Jeannie came and we, uh, Laura and I and Mike and Jeannie had, uh, we had two and a half hours together and it was, you know, I was just able to say to Mike again, thank you for letting us do these things. You know, look at what we got to do. I was in Israel for that tour and I heard for the first time from... Uh, remember, we did uh, Shalom Jerusalem. I do, Paul Wilbur. And, with Paul Wilbur, the first big event in Jerusalem. And we had, I don't know, three and a half thousand people there, but it cost a fortune, well over a half a million dollars for oh, that recording. God. But I, <clears throat> Mike felt it was important 
to worship the Lord on Mount Zion. And so that's what we did. But uh, I met um, one of our guides on this trip, uh, Erez uh, Bar David. Erez Bar David. Erez, son of David. And he was, um, he said, that event in, I think it was 95, he said it changed it what it changed Israel forever because up to that point, the Messianic believers were scattered everywhere. They're just kind of little pockets here and there, and and really kind of persecuted as well to be a Messianic believer <clears throat> um, in Israel. But uh, what that event did was brought the Messianic believers from every part of Israel up to Jerusalem to worship. And he said, from and his his grandfather started the first messianic of uh, uh, congregation in Israel. His grandfather mm, did, mm. and uh, in 1948, when Israel became a nation, he said there were no more than 100 messianic believers in Israel. Now there are thousands, but it's. Uh, he said what this event did was bring the believers, the messianic believers, together, and almost kind of gave them. Encouragement and, oh, and let right. them know that uh, we're, we're for them. And from that point on, he told me that it changed everything. And I was, I was I was thrilled to be able to tell Mike Coleman just another perspective because he doesn't get to travel that much. But uh, we're we are out there, and you know, I'm sure you hear these stories all the time as well. That that the integrity music stuff that we did, that we had a part of, finding the songs, producing the albums. And then the distribution all over the world, it changed the way nations worship. It really it's amazing. Did. It really did. And we got to be right in the middle of it. I know. I, so I just miraculous. I can't uh, thank the Lord enough for that. What a what an honor. I just uh, produced a, a CD for one of our boot camp clients, yeah. uh, Bunmi. Hey, Bunmi. I know you're listening. Hey, Bunmi. And uh, <laughs> she, uh, you met her in Saskatoon, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yes, I did. Chris Springer were up there yeah. and Lenny LeBlanc yeah. recently. And so <laughs> we were just at the University of Mobile. You had sung at an event. Oh, yeah. That's and, when I had uh, lunch with Mike. Yeah, Oh, so exactly. you were just down there and you were at yeah. the studio you recorded yeah, there? Yeah, I worked down there with Chris. Beautiful studio. It's yeah. amazing. And yeah. Uh, that's four albums I've done down there with uh, Chris, yeah. including my own. Fantastic. And uh, we were talking about you being having <laughs> been there as well as Bunmi. Uh, she was just going on and on and on about the impact of uh, Hosanna music. Yeah. You know that you were yeah. you were such a big part of, and uh, how it got her through medical school. And she remembers just weeping on the floor with those worship songs yeah. and and uh, you know, the the platform that that continues to be for you today is is pretty amazing. You've yeah. just handed me uh, a copy of your brand new book, <laughs> uh, God Will Make a Way: Discovering His Hope in Your Story. Yeah. What congratulations! Thanks. It's a gorgeous book. Now I'm just sitting Thank here, kind of <laughs> holding it in awe. It's so awesome. I can't wait to read it. But congratulations on this. Thank you. But all these years that you've poured your life into the nations, and uh, God has made a way for you to sure. impact millions of people. What does yeah. that even feel like? Yeah. Well, that's why you know it's it's always, and I'm sure you feel this as well. It's a humbling experience to hear people sing in your songs. The fact that uh, God has given me and you uh, uh, a platform. Uh, it's it's an amazing uh, a worldwide platform, and it was totally amazing. Uh, and what I found out was, you know, I'm not the hippest, coolest singer in the world, but uh, many years ago, the Lord just spoke to me and just said, "You be Don Moen, just be yourself." That's why I tell worship leaders all the time, "Hey," because I'm on stage with a lot of what I would consider a lot cooler people, <laughs> and younger and hipper and. And and the thought goes through my head, hey, Don, you better dial this up uh, because Don <laughs> Moen is not enough. And then I hear in my other ear another voice that says, just be yourself. Uh, and, and I've learned that um, that's really the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, and so I, I've learned over the years just when, I, when God opens the doors and puts me on a platform, uh, I, I do a lot better if I just 
walk in my own anointing, walk in who God made me. I can't be as hip and cool as others, but guess what? They can't be Don Moen either. Exactly. Can't be John Chisholm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, and, I, and I take it seriously, the fact that God has given me this platform, and along with the platform comes a responsibility to uh, model and to uh, and to, to just set a high standard of of excellence in all we do, and you know, the book I talk a lot about. Just yeah, God made God has made a way for me. You know, I I failed my speech class at Oral Roberts University because I couldn't speak in front of fifteen people. That's so. If God can use me, He can use anybody. You know, so that's uh, that's uh, you know some of the things that I talk about in the book, and I, I have. I had a guy named Robert Noland help me write it because I uh, I had about six weeks off for a knee surgery and I thought uh, back almost two years ago now and I thought I'm not going to waste my time just sitting here so I'm going to all my life I've thought about doing a book I never have and I thought well I'm going to go ahead and do something mm. so I wrote a manuscript and uh, and uh, I have lots of stories. You know, I've traveled all over the world. Yes, you did. I got stories after stories. And as I started writing the book, I thought, I looked at the, I said, man, there's way too many Don Moen stories in here. But uh, the publisher said, uh, that's why you got a deal on the book, because of your stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people find them interesting, I you guess. You are but, the book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, a song like God Will Make a Way, how many times have you recorded it, do you know? Oh, uh, recorded it. Uh, there's probably eight or ten versions of it out mm-hmm. there of just and, yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I, you know, of course, uh, you know, you have me singing it. Yeah, choral and and uh, you know, this key change, that key change. <laughs> I did a thing, uh, or was it back in uh, 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 the fall? I've done a couple of times uh, a thing with an orchestra. Um, a legit orchestra and choir in Holland, mm. um, and uh, and and when I do things with an orchestra, I have to kind of relearn because I give them an orchestration that was done for a musical or something like that. So I'm always having to relearn yeah. my arrangement. Like, uh, okay, I don't remember that key change, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but wow. it's uh, it was uh, a song written uh, for a desperate situation in my life, but it, it's not a song of desperation, a song of declaration. It was when my little nephew was killed in a car accident, and uh, and I just wrote it for the family, for mm-hmm. Susan and Craig, who you, mm-hmm. you might have met them. Mm-hmm. but um, Along the way. Uh, but they, uh, you know, I sang it for them, and it wasn't until a couple of years later that I was I sang it for our chapel service. That was probably 89, I suppose. Uh, and it's like everybody that day needed to hear he works in ways we cannot see. <laughs> it's like, where'd you get that song? And I said, I was written for a personal situation. They said, you need to record it. And I said, I don't think I ever will because it's uh, it's just a personal thing. But I did record it, and now it's it become yeah, probably my most well-known song. Isn't that amazing? And God's still using it, and he's still bringing hope to people. It was written to bring hope to Susan and Craig, and guess what? Uh, it's is still bringing hope to people today. Mm. I sing it almost every day to myself. Right. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, all the different things come up in life and God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And thank you, Lord, for making a way. Even though all that mm. I see around me may seem hopeless at times, um, and everybody goes through that, don't they? You know, I think it just goes to show that you don't have to try to trick it out and be the coolest thing on the block no. to have an anointed message yeah. that is God-breathed and reaches literally millions of people that the coolest hippest songs might not ever Yeah, reach. and you know, as uh, I think you, you probably realize, I mean, worship really is a common denominator, uh, true worship. Mm-hmm. Um, it crosses generations, cultures, uh, denominations. Uh, generations, it it really connects with, uh, and that's why even in like Nigeria, go figure, why would they be singing John Chisholm songs or Don Moen songs? Why? I mean, we're, we're middle of the road white guys. Yeah. But that doesn't even uh, enter into the equation. What connects with the people is the heart 
of worship. It's the heart of worship. It's and amazing. It does. It just brings down a lot of barriers. I I had no clue that I had any kind of platform in Nigeria <laughs> until yeah. our mutual friend Wally, yeah, you know, yeah. called me and he's hello, sa. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, would you would you come to Nigeria? And I'm like, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and I told him I'd pray about it, and he calls me back in the next week, sir. Have you prayed? Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, no, yeah. but I will. <laughs> so I've only been over there about five or six times, and yeah. you, I don't know, you've been over there dozens, but yeah, I've been over there a lot. But I, I bet you, I bet you, I've been there at least twenty times or or more. You've been probably, there twenty that I know of, so so probably more. Yeah, uh, when the first time I arrived uh, in '08, I think it was, uh, I got off the airplane and people said. It's the, like the airline workers walking down the jetway. It's Don Moen. Yeah. And yeah. now when I get off the plane in Nigeria, they say, hi, Don, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, which is a, a real, it's great because it's yeah. like, hey, welcome back, Don. You know, good, good to see you again. See you, see you next month. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, the songs of Hosanna, uh, my 1994 album, which Firm Foundation mm-hmm. And of course, all of yours. You know, I've I've had two Integrity Hosanna records, and you've had how many? I don't know, uh, a ten or fifteen, I suppose. So you know, can't can't keep up with you on that one. But yeah. but all of these songs are just woven into the fabric of the church there, yeah. like yeah, true. like yeah. not even here in the states, Correct. right? Yep. It's just a whole different thing, yep. and. Uh, I've everywhere I, I've gone over there. We have to sing "Firm Foundation," which was written by our dear friends Nancy Gordon yeah. and Jamie Harville for that record um, that uh, we did back then. And I'm releasing the 25th anniversary single done in more of a soul calypso style. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I heard some of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you sent so me a sample. So yeah. 25 years ago, fun, and yet the life. In all of those songs, the life and all of those songs that you wrote and released, it's tremendous. Decades to come, they'll there was they will still have impact and power. Yeah. Years and and I just yeah blows. And my I want to thank you for uh, I mean this for what you're doing with songwriters. And I remember uh, how intentional you were, even with me when you came down to uh, integrity intentional about getting me with a Mm -hmm. co-writer, sitting down and writing songs. I mean, you put a demand on my gift and, uh, and I want to thank you for that. And I'm glad, I'm really glad to see that you're doing that uh, with, with again, with writers, because you, you have a real gift. Um, I think you see things that people don't see. Uh, You have the ability to, there's a lot of garbage out there. To cut through the garbage, you don't need to write a bad song, but uh, just the way you approached, uh, I think the word is intention, intentionality. You know, you were you encouraged me to be intentional about writing. You you forced me. I know you didn't encourage me. I know, man. You I forced me. I think you year. set up writing times. I did, <laughs> <laughs> and we wrote together. And it's like, um, you know, there's a million reasons that get in the way of sitting down to write, but uh, your job at Integrity was to, mm-hmm. you had to build the catalog. Yeah. So uh, I want to thank you for that, for coming into my office and and putting a demand on my gift. Wow. I well, mean, I'm thinking about, Lord, I offer my life to you. Oh, gosh. You put me together with Claire Cloninger. Yeah. And Claire and I have written some of my best songs together. Yeah. So I know. Thank you. I know. Well, yeah. Hey, you are welcome, and you're just trying to walk in my own gift. But Lord, I offer my life is so special. Yeah. Uh, great, great song that you guys wrote, and uh, some of the things that you and I wrote together. Um, I see the Lord yeah. uh, on Ron Canoli, yep. and the funny thing was when I went to Trinidad and Tobago two years ago. That's the whole reason I've done the Soka single because I was on the radio over there and these 30-something-year-old DJs who were playing this crazy energetic stuff right? that I can't right. compete with, right. they knew every song I'd written. Every song. Yeah. And they started naming all the Ron Canoli songs and everything. They just knew it all. And wow. I know they know every song you've written because they our grew heart, up Our heart, our desire. It's yeah. you and yeah. uh, George Cersei. George Cersei, yeah. Awesome writer. Oh, gosh. So 
I, I think that it's it's amazing to look back and think that anything we've written could outlive us. Yeah. You know, an Almighty Cross, which Baroni yeah. and I wrote, and a couple of hymnals, and I know yeah. God will make a way, will long outlive you and, you know, probably all of us. But it's one of those few songs. Uh, you know, and I, that's what I keep trying to come back to with, with writers is write something that's important. Yeah. Write something that's going to last. And yeah. you have done that over and over and over again. And um, so I'm sure back to your book for a moment. Um, it, it recaptures, I haven't read it yet. You just handed it, me, mm-hmm. handed it to me. But, yeah. So does this kind of span your, your beginnings all yeah. the way to the present? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it starts with the story of how I uh, wrote God Will Make a Way. And then um, and this goes into kind of uh, um, it, how I got started. I mean, as a violinist and, um, you know, my first... Uh, Exposure to worship music and how you know, I had a guy named Terry Law, oh yeah, who, an evangelist who who really gave me my, my first shot. Uh, Larry Dalton and Terry Law, my first shot at writing and, uh, and arranging and producing and uh, and then Terry with me leading worship. I wasn't a great worship leader, but he he booted me out there every Sunday. Get out there and put a demand on your gift. Put a demand yeah. on my gift, and I talk in the book about you know if you've got a pastor like that or somebody around you that pushes you out of your comfort zone every week, you thank God for them because they they're putting a demand on your gift. You're going to do things. They believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I, I talk about that, and I. Then I talk about my connection with Integrity and uh, how that all happened. And then I talk about how when I left Integrity, it was tough. I was scared. You know, I I wrote uh, one song, Still I believe there is more. Oh, I was full of faith. And then the paychecks (laughs) stopped coming in. Then I I started writing songs like, I find myself in uncharted territory. (laughs) Never felt so lost, never felt so lonely. Where are you, Lord? You know, let's be honest about it. You know, so it was scary. Um, But, uh, yeah, uh, so I I talk about all all that stuff. And it's just what I hope people will get from this is, is to realize no matter what they are going through, no matter what they're in the middle of, God is bigger than your storm. He's bigger than your situation. And even at this moment, he's working in ways that that, that you cannot see. I mean, that's... Uh, and, and, if, and I hope people, when they read this, say, hey, if God can do that for Don Moen, kind of a normal guy, normal singer, normal piano player, he can do it for you. And a lot of it is... Uh, the fact that I was blessed to have people around me that put a demand on my gifts. And that's, again, I want to thank you for that. Uh, I, I'm thankful for Terry Law, the, uh, an evangelist that just kicked my butt every week and got me out there, you know, and uh, believing in me when I didn't really even yeah. believe in myself. Yeah. Wow, what a blessing. Um, people have done that for me through the years, so yeah. I know the value. Yeah, of that, sort of, and, I think and you're doing it. You're doing it now to young writers, and I'm, I'm thrilled to see what's mm, what's going on. Thanks, and, Don. Uh, and the fact that you're sowing those seeds and and putting a demand on on these gifts, mm. producing artists again. And mm-hmm. You're back in the record business. I'm back so in the business. I know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, it, it's amazing what God has has done and allowed us to do the last three years here at Nashville Christian Songwriters, and we're going into our fourth year, and for any startup to last a year is a miracle, but to be going into our fourth year and to be growing, and uh, we're increasing our offerings this year with our weekend events, our boot camp is growing, it's full every time. Uh, We're launching a new video course this year, Uh, our podcast, we're about to drop uh, our 100th episode. So it it's just amazing, but no no one's any more amazed than I am. Are you finding good songs? We are, we are. So people Absolutely. are writing good songs. You know, with yeah. our days at Integrity, you know, it was uh, we had to make a statement. You know, when I do a songwriter seminar, people say, "Well, how can I get it recorded?" Exactly. Ultimately, they want exactly. to make millions of dollars. That's what and, they want. Yeah. So you you do take some time to to give them a reality check on all that. Hey, this is what it's about. But a a good song. 
will find its way to the surface. But those days, uh, we had to send out letters saying, uh, we don't accept unsolicited material. Exactly. Um, and yet, my car was always full of unsolicited material. <laughs> I found some of the... Uh, some of the like uh, uh, some of the songs I've recorded I found on unsolicited material. Right, but here yeah. was the deal: if you listen to a thousand songs, there's out of a thousand you probably find a hundred that are okay. Out of the hundred, you find ten that you would want to record. Out of the ten, you're going to find one shout to the Lord or give thanks or something like that. Yeah. Isn't it? Tr- isn't it the yeah. truth? Is it still the same for you now? Well, or? you know what? I'm not just reviewing songs all the time, yeah. other than for our clients. So we're kind of set up a little bit differently because I'm not a recording company yeah. as such. Yeah, please send all your songs to the <laughs> trenches. <laughs> I'm editing that out. <laughs> That's going to be gone before the day is over. But I do still wind up listening to. Tons and tons of songs. And yeah. The reality that I have, have discovered, Don, is that there is still a groundswell of God in the earth mm. motivating people to write worship. I mean, that it's huge. It's still just as big as ever. And you'd think with the record business is smaller, it's digitized now, it's all online, blah, blah, blah. I, I mean, I, the name of our podcast is The Song Revolution, because I think that there is a, a revolution afoot in, if I can be so bold and prophetic, God is jealous for his own glory, mm-hmm. and you can't yeah. you can't push everything that God is through radio. That's true. You know, or through one oh, yeah. tiny little outlet like that, or, yeah. you know, they... I heard Radio's re- playing 25 songs. Exactly. And I, <laughs> I, I heard recently that the most popular songs and the majority of the songs that are being recorded these days are written by about 18 songwriters around the world. And we love them. Yeah. We know them and we love them. But God is bigger than all that, sure. buddy. And what I'm discovering is a mass hunger to learn how to fulfill their calling. And so that's really what we're about. And, you know, maybe we will become a record company. I don't know. Yeah. I, I know for now, our goal, my my mandate is to train and equip. And then we'll see what God does from there. But I meet so many people, dozens and dozens and dozens. I've personally spoken with over 800 aspiring songwriters about our boot camp in the last two years. Wow. And I've had roughly 10% come through, and like you were just talking about the thousand songs to the hundred yeah, to the yeah, ten. Yeah, there you go. I have people that are now on radio and getting publishing attention and co-writing with some of the top people in town because they came through and learned. They wanted to do it, right. but their passion did not equal ability. And yep. so we're on the training side. Here's a, just a huge commercial for what we do, but yeah. oh. I'm bringing all this experience with you and Paul Blosh and yeah. all the wonderful writers we worked with, Linda yeah. Shazo, More oh Precious Than Silver, Gary Sadler, Ancient of Days, Jamie, Nancy. Yeah. I mean, we had, a, we had a roster of about 18 songwriters back yeah. in the day, you yeah. being one of them. I was on the roster. and. Yeah. Yep. And and but it's it's all of that that I want to bring to these people that that are listening who want to write a God will make a way. And do you think there's you know you know here I am interviewing you because <laughs> right. pe- people always the ask table. me this question. Okay, is there a new message of worship out there? I mean, is there? Do you see anything new happening in terms of what's being written? Um, what's being sung in churches? I mean, do you, you, you talk about? You said you have like almost a prophetic word. There's a a revolution coming, but what is it going to sound like? Do you have any idea? Could you tell me so I could write something? Yeah, like that? for real, for real. I mean, well, I, I I agree with you, by the way. But it's like I I ask the Holy Spirit to open my ears to let me hear the sound because mm. I. I, when I go to churches sometime, everybody's doing the same stuff over and over again. And I, I look at the congregation and I just think there's a hunger, a real hunger and a genuine desperation to go to a new place. And I want to be a part of taking them there. I mean, do you have any any idea or a, any guidance about that, where that is? What it's going to sound wow. like? Well, that's a huge question. And I, I think 
just on the practical side, how I think it's going to emerge is when, I mean, we're in, we're in the digital age, no doubt about it. The fantasy of some record company person showing up mm-hmm. and discovering you and making you a star, that's over. Yeah, it is. That does not work anymore. No. And so I, I believe that this new sound is going to be the sound of more the sound of the Psalms, the sound of authenticity, yeah. the sound of suffering, the sound oh, of crying out, Boy. even in the midst of our, our pain, rather than a sugar-coated glossiness on the message. I think it's about reality. and I think that that's really good. I was just going to say that same. I, I, that's where I think as well. Uh, but uh, I think about the Psalms, and I and an authenticity is a huge thing. But the challenge is, uh, I mean, I, I really resonate with what you're saying because I think that's going to be a, a big part of where we're going. It's it's being honest with God. Yes. If you want to read uh, some lyrics to write for, read the Psalms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> read read Psalm 109. Uh, why does the wicked man prosper? I pray that his wife would be widowed, his children would beg in the streets, a creditor would come and seize all that he has. <laughs> Everybody stand and sing now. I mean, this is like, um, uh, how do you train a church? The challenge is people look at YouTube, they look at television, they see the way the uh, mega churches are doing it, and they, they, they say this is the way church needs to look like, sound like, feel like. So pastors want to, hey, hey, I don't want my people lamenting. Uh, and this is where worship leaders and pastors really need to work together. Uh, and I think as worship leaders, sometimes you can say to your congregation, this is a song that you just need to sit down and listen to. Now, we're not singing the blues here, but we are going to... S- pour our hearts out in honest lament to the mm-hmm. Lord. And I, I just think God loves our honesty. So I think, I, I agree with you. I think authenticity, honesty, uh, a lament. But if you look at the Psalms of David, there was a lot of lamenting, but usually toward the end, he always turned it to, but yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I mean, it's kind of like, hey, I'm going through this. Yeah. But... God is faithful. You know, I'll give you know, a little. I, I I agree wholeheartedly. I'll I'll give a little shout out to our friend Elisa Turner, who is a current integrity artist and uh, writes with Michael Farron and some other great people here in town. And here is a woman who was an independent artist. She's been on our show, and when I see her in social settings, she's always so sweet. She's a she's a big hugger like your Laura is, but uh, Elisa. Um, uh, was an independent artist, you know, just on her own for 15 years or more, and lost her dad, who was a worship leader at a pretty young age. He was her biggest fan, and then she was she uh, was bedridden with Lyme's disease oh, gosh. for <clears throat> off and on for years, and still struggles with it. Told she could never be pregnant, get pregnant, got pregnant. Told she would not be able to carry the baby, and told to abort it. She chose not to. But her little son, London, passed 90, 70 minutes, 90 minutes, somewhere. It was an hour and a half. And, oh. and there's this very tragically touching picture of him on her breast, you know, as he passed away. Oh and, you know, but she is, she, Elisa, I love you, honey. She is such a shining example of what we're talking about, the tragedy through the tears, the, the and her music is reflecting that. And, that, and so... I think they're doing a really good job with her and that record, the record she's done, mm. of capturing the lament without being uh, maudlin yeah. and, mm-hmm. you know, sure. it's not just tragic, but it really is, yeah. and it's not triumphalistic in the sense of, let's gloss it all over. It's yeah. like, no, little London died. He did not live outside the womb. And yet, she's one of the most beautiful shining believers just filled with worship. And so it can be done, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking about the song, I Will I will Sing. You know, Beautiful Habakkuk song. 317 says, though the fig trees have no blossoms, no fruit on the vine, the cattle barns are empty, the fields lie barren and yield no fruit. And yet I will rejoice in yeah. the Lord and I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. And the verses 
when I wrote this, uh, this is back in probably 2001 uh, or 2001, I guess, when I wrote I Will Sing. And it's, uh, the verse says, Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles or more it feels today. And though I haven't lost my faith, I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray, but I don't know what to say. I don't mm. know where to start. But as you give the grace with all that's in my heart, I will I'll sing, sing. I, will praise, I will praise, even in my <laughs> darkest hour through oh, the sorrow and the pain. So there it is. And when I wrote that, I thought, I can't ever record it. I can't record this song because people are going to say, it's too real. Don, Don has issues. Don has issues with God because he's saying, Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles more. But the more I shared it with people, the more um, uh, I realized that everybody feels that way. They're just, they don't want to talk about it. They stay on the on the top surface of, exactly. hey, look, I'm happy I know. You know, when they're going through hell. So I say, yeah, it's time to get honest and to uh, write songs like that because... I mean, and if you want encouragement for that, read through the Psalms. Just see what David was going through, yet he chose to give God praise. You know, I will bless the Lord at all times. You know, I, yeah. I think sometimes because I do review a lot of songs with my clients, it seems like they start to get into the pain or the darkness or the tragic part, and then they want to slap Jesus as yeah. a Band-Aid on it. And I don't yeah. think that's quite the same thing. Yeah. I think there's there's an argument for There's re- not always a happy ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. every story. And I'm I'm kind of that guy in the way I I like let's let's ooh that's tragic. Let's put a bow on it. But right. that's not life all the time. Mm-mm. But yet uh, look at Job. Job. Mm. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. You know, he lost everything. Mm. And it, what you know his friends told him to curse God. His wife told him to curse God. But yet, uh, he he just chose to give God praise and blessing through it all. And there was a happy ending to that story. But still, uh, it wasn't happy at the time. You know, he lost everything. Mm-hmm. So, um, one thing I've learned, even stepping out on my own, leaving integrity after 20 years there, I've been in Nashville 10 years, is God is faithful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did an interview uh Oh, a few months back with uh, Chester Thompson, <clears throat> the drummer with uh, Genesis and uh, and Phil Collins and and Chester. He he called Nashville uh, the uh, furnace. Let's see, the the refiner's fire. Mm. That's what he called Nashville. Mm. Nashville is the refiner's fire because people come here to to follow their dream and they have all these expectations, and yet when they get here. Boy, they go through like tough times. Totally. He calls it the refiner's fire. And he said, Don, if God was a musician, he would be a jazz musician because he never plays it the same way twice. <laughs> Everybody is different, yet we it's all good. go through the fire. But yeah. I think it's in the process that this is where, as a songwriter, you better write those thoughts down. Just write them down. Write the thoughts that you have going through that. And in the you know, and then when you have some time, take those thoughts. That's those are the I call those the Holy Spirit inspired thoughts that that can uh, when uh, if you're diligent about working on your craft, that can become the seed of a really powerful a lyric mm. and a powerful song. Mm. You know, but it's in the middle of the furnace, mm. the fire. That's when that's when we yeah. cry out to God. Mm. You know? Yeah, you you want to get tested as a songwriter or artist, move to Nashville. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's just because this place is and we love it here, but well, there's everybody's chasing their dream. And uh and and there are people uh in the mainstream and country music and pop music, that's all they do every day, John. Yeah. They go to with their lunch pail to work, yeah, and I they know. write. A, they have a, a session from ten to one, another session from two to five, mm-hmm. another session from seven to ten, mm-hmm. every single mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. So then, as Christians, we get a song. The Holy Spirit gives us a song. I think God gave me a song. Well, you know, He gave you an idea. It may not be a great song, but I think what you're doing through the songwriters thing, you're, it's it's a craft. You have to, you have to be objective. 
not subjective. And I, I say to people, if you want to be a songwriter, get leather skin. Because yeah. when you play your song for somebody and you say, what do you think? Well, they'll tell you what they mm -hmm. think. I had this girl one time, and you've had this happen, I'm sure, but she goes, would you please listen to my 10 songs? My pastor and my worship leader are not anointed, and I know you are anointed. You'll be able to hear how good these songs are. And I listened to them. I said, no, you know what? Your pastor and your worship leader are, oh, are they're right. They're right. These are not good songs. But it's like, as, as Christians, we... You know, we think, oh, we have one song. But, you know, there's just this discipline of, hey, you have an idea. Let's make it better. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's, now let's, okay, you wrote it another way. Now come back to me and write it another way again. Mm -hmm. That's just, mm -hmm. that's just a good discipline. You know, when I was writing jingles, uh, they didn't, they didn't pay me for, you know, a few years. That's what I did to make a living, write radio and television commercials. And it's like, they didn't say, hey, brother, that's a good idea, brother. No, they said, that's crap. You know, and they wouldn't, I didn't get paid yeah, right. until they said, we like the first part. We hate the second yeah, part. Exactly. No, put their arm around me and comfort me. Hey, brother, God bless you. I think you can do better. Oh, no. So it was really good for me to go through that. It, it made me a better writer. But you got to yeah. remain objective about all these things. I think in Christian music especially, there is this over-spiritualization. Oh, yeah. That what you're just describing in secular music, it's either a hit or it's not. Right. They're Get just, out of my office. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Come back when you got something good. Exactly. I mean, that's the reality of what happens. And, it, and a little dose of that is really is good for anybody that wants to be a writer. Uh, it's, just, it's just reality. And right. people are going to, it's like holding your little baby up and saying, hey, do you think she's cute? Uh, no, I think she's ugly. You know, it's yeah, like. She looks like Winston Churchill. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> but that's what they're going to say about your song. And some people can't handle that. And if you can't handle that, well, you don't want to be a songwriter. Mm. You got to learn to, hey, you know what? People are going to, some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. But you keep writing mm. and keep, keep perfecting your craft. That's Absolutely. the way you get better at it. Absolutely. I think the other part, we talked about uh, the sound, the prophetic sound yeah. of worship in the future. And I think the other side of it that I've thought of since we've been sitting here talking is the diversity. Yeah. You know, because, you know, and that's something that integrity through the years has done um, in, in, exploring indigenous music, you yeah. know, throughout the world. Yeah. And you, especially with all of your international traveling all yeah. over the world. Um, I mean, you you um, sang for the Pope with yeah. uh, Andrea Bocelli, and yeah. was Darlene Check there? Yeah. I remember Dar yeah. you, Darlene, and Andrea Bocelli. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, what an amazing thing, ecumenical in the yeah. sense of, you know, some people would think, oh my gosh, Catholic, he sang yeah. for the Pope. But, you know, how do you feel about that? And what was that experience like? That was, uh, uh, well, uh, all through my life, uh, I've kind of... Um, walked through the doors that God opened for me. Um, uh, and I've worked uh, among the Catholic Church uh, throughout my career. It's just because God opened that door. And I, I, that's, again, going back to worship transcends denominations and cultures and uh, generations. Mm. Uh, and um, that... Uh, that experience was uh, was thrilling to see twenty five thousand people in St. Peter's Square um, worshiping, and the the it was the uh, it was the forty seventh anniversary of the charismatic renewal in the Catholic Church. That's amazing. What that's what we were doing. I'd so, forgotten that. That's yeah. Amazing. So there was an Italian choir singing and orchestra, and when they sang a song, first of all, uh, Pope Francis spoke about the Holy Spirit mm. and the charismatic movement. And he said, don't pray to be, don't pray that you can become a part of the charismatic movement. Ask that the charismatic movement becomes a part of you. Oh, That's what he said. So good. And, yeah. And he, and he talked about unity. He said, if ISIS, uh, when, they, when they kill somebody, they don't say, are you a Catholic or are you a Protestant? They say, are you a Christian? Mm. And... And if they can, he said, if they can be uh, united so much in their hatred toward us, 
as Christians, we should be united in our love for each other, mm. and it should surpass denominations. Mm. So, um, and then he he spoke on the Holy Spirit, and then the choir sang this song, "Come, Holy Spirit, come." And when they finished, twenty five thousand people began to worship in the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Saint Peter's Square was mm. filled with the sound of free worship. Mm. It's am- it was amazing. Mm-hmm. I wanted to take out my uh, camera, my phone, and take uh, like a video of it, but it's, uh, I said, I can't do this. I was right on the main stage, right, right. next to Andrea Bocelli. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I can't uh, do this, but wow, what an experience it yeah. was. And then there were some that, um, that gave me, um, some people didn't understand, why are you singing for the Catholic Church? I said, you know what? This is about people worshiping God, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what I've tried to do uh, throughout my life. It's like if God opens the doors, uh, you know, I'm going to go there and I'm going to worship. Well, I do hope that unity and diversity is the hallmark of the new worship. I think it has to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, what do you think heaven's going to be like? Yeah, right. Oh, it's going to yeah, really diverse. Mm-hmm. Every tongue, tribe, people, and nation. Mm. And uh, so I think we better. Uh, Get get used to it mm-hmm. because that's the way it's it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the music, uh, you know, there's going to be uh, music for everyone. You know, just powerfully even imagine what that could be like. I mean, you experience something moving and, and amazing in St. Petersburg Square. Yeah, but what is that to heaven? Yeah, I I try to imagine that. Uh, and I just, uh, I think I think about that, and I think about what song would, would I write? And there's a good idea to think about when you're writing. What would you write? What holy, holy, holy? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Um, but what would you? What would be the expression that would bring every tongue, tribe, people, and nation together? What would it be? What would it sound like? You know, what would the melody be like? Anyway, I think about that sometime, and I mm. ask the Holy Spirit, "Open my ears. I want to hear it. Mm. I want to. I want to hear a glimpse of it." Sometimes, mm. in the middle of the night, I think I get an idea that uh, that a Holy Spirit gives me, and then I quietly sing it into my phone. The next morning, I listen to it, and it's like, "Ooh, that's really bad." <laughs> <laughs> so it might have been the pizza I had. Yeah, but, could have been. Yeah, I'm always listening for that sound. <laughs> well, you know, we're praying that you get it, that you do. Amen. We need it. And uh, and I think that's the thing that I keep trying to say to these writers is we need what God wants to pour through you. Yes, there are hundreds of thousands of worship songs, but we still need yours. We need what God wants to birth in you. You have yeah, something to say. Say it a new way. Yeah. Say look, say that same scripture the new uh, a new way. Make a fresh expression. That's what I challenge songwriters to do. It's like don't be a copycat and say the same thing that everybody else is saying. God we, he he created the world. He out of you know out of uh nothingness, you know, the earth was out form and void and he made it he he created uh, a, a, he he put the planets in place. He he brought definition. He brought order to chaos and confusion and and darkness. And he spoke, and there it was. And I that's the kind of God we serve. And if he can do that with the world, he can certainly do that if you ask him uh, with a song. Hmm. God, give me a fresh new expression to offer up to you. Right. He, you yeah. think he's going to run out of ideas? No way. <laughs> and so anyway, I just that's, that's my prayer, you know, that yeah. uh, that he'll give that to me. And um I haven't written in a long time. I've got ideas, different ideas and it's you know, it's kind of I got a little demotivated because when we were at Hosanna Integrity, uh we there was, you know, you put the when you see your name on a calendar and a release date for the project That'll bring the fear of God into you, and <laughs> and and you know that will that will cause you to sit down and write. And nowadays, because they there are not uh, the record labels pushing you to do that, pushing me to do it. Uh, it's such a different environment today. You got YouTube, you got different things, but 
the putting the demand on the gift. Right. So I have these ideas out there, and it's like there's not a fixed ship out date where they're going to ship fifty thousand units out, and you're you know you do a CD. Well, uh, I don't. You might not sell a hundred, but the other side of that is now we have YouTube. We have other things, other ways that people can get your song. And and the truth is, a good song will always find its way to the service. Yeah. It will. Yeah. It just will. It's going to come through your pastor, come through your music director, come through another church. Oh, hey, what? did you hear that song? And that's something that I've thought about as well, John, with the, with the social platform that God has given me. Like, what can I do? What can I do to help a you? a young writer, a young artist with, with the platform that I have. Because, like you said, it's it's not like uh, labels are going to sign you and make you into a star. Uh, it yeah. just doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. So what can we do with the platform God has given us? And that's what I'm praying about. Like, I don't want to get into running a label again, doing it the same old way, but there are fresh new things that God is doing. And, and, and there's there are fresh songs being written, uh, young worship leaders out there. And I want to say, okay, I can't help everybody, but as God brings someone across my path, mm-hmm. what can I do to bring exposure to exactly. that? You know, exactly. So, yeah. well, I know you've got a ton of things going on. You, as you're just expressing, love to encourage, mentor, train. You've got resources at donmoen.com. Uh, yep. Your YouTube channel, uh, we were talking earlier before the show, you're building that up right now. Tell us about the array of, of resources and, and how our listeners can tap into that. Yeah. Uh, well, donmoen.com is is the website. And uh, uh, we've, we've got, uh, the, what's really working for us right now is uh, the YouTube uh, channel, Uh we started with like 38 people. Now we have about 300,000 that subscribe. But it's grown into something significant. And I, I do a lot of teaching. I do. I, I go in the studio with the band and we record videos. So it's donmoen.tv. Donmoen.tv. And, and it's amazing. I was uh, Wherever I go, people say, thank you for doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's practical teaching. We've done about six or seven v- DVDs where we everything from working with the rhythm section or rehearsing your vo- your band, uh, vocal training, uh, just concepts of leading worship. So we've done all that stuff, but um, uh, that's been that's actually grown into something a lot bigger than I thought, mm-hmm. um, and that is maybe the platform that I think uh, t- giving song exposure, artist exposure, as God has given us again when He gives a platform. Along with that platform comes a responsibility to be a good steward of it. Absolutely. So what can I do? So yeah, donmoen.com, we have all the resources in the store there. But uh, you know, um, the 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 YouTube channel is what's really growing uh Don Moen, uh, dot TV and, and of course the Instagram and Twitter. I you know, in some ways I hate social media. <laughs> I want to get off of it. Mm. But because of the nature of what we do, you know, I need to always yeah. kind of be in touch. And uh, try not to get sucked into um, insignificant things, you know, right? Insignificant conversations and stuff. But as God gives us a, a, a group of people that are interested, you know, I want to do what I can do to help others as well. Well, you certainly are uh, in Thanks. all of a, your entire career and ministry <laughs> and continuing. You know, we are the fathers in Israel, so to speak. Mm. These days, hard to believe. I still yeah, feel I like I'm 30, but <laughs> I know I don't. I don't walk like it anymore. But <laughs> I know. My, my head, I'm still that young guy too. <laughs> but man, I just want to take a moment to honor you and thank God for the legacy of song and ministry and encouragement and worship that will continue. I mean, it, this isn't something sure. that you know is is going to dry up and go away. You have made a rich deposit into the body of Christ, me personally, um, just in my family, and you've loved us and been such an encouragement to us through the years. And uh, to um, I just want to honor you, man. I just want to say Thanks. thank you on behalf of the millions of people who've been blessed and, and really found hope uh, that God would make a way for them. Amen. 
in their lives, man. I mean, it's such Thank a you. legacy, and and it continues. So, well, God man, is this good. is this has been so rich. Thank you for being on the show with us. Thank you for my yeah. book signed to me and to yeah. Donna, my wife. And uh, thirty nine years for us this year. How long is it for you and Laura? Forty five. Forty five. Well, yeah, in wow. May it'll be forty six years. Wow! Can you believe that? Wow! Seven grandkids with three yeah. in just the last few months. Right? Yeah, yeah. We got a, <laughs> the last. We got a four month old, a two month old, and a ten day old. Wow. So that's uh, and it is. That's, I mean, honestly, Laura and I had five kids. I don't know how we did it, John. I mean, we, I do remember shuffling through the house a lot. I remember getting up in the morning and shuffling to the kitchen to make <laughs> lunches for the kids. Like, and now when the grandkids come over, you know, it's like, wow. I mean, you know, seven little, our kids show up and then the grandkids. So now it's like six and now seven little grandchildren under five years old. Mm. And when they all leave the house, Laura and I look at each other and say, oh, you know, how did we do this? How did we do it? Well, we, well, we were younger, we were younger too. Younger, yeah. But, oh my gosh. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, I, I feel very, very blessed. I think about uh, uh, Smitty, Michael W. Smith. He's got, I think, 12. Oh. And I really want to get with him and just say, how, what's it, is it the same when... When you have 12 together at one time, how did, Mm -mm -mm. that's got to be, it's crazy. Wow. And then, you know, the funny thing, I'm singing all the time and the kids, they go through their coughs and their colds and, and it's like, they come up to Papa, (laughs) coughing in my face and I said, hey, Papa has to sing. (laughs) Yeah, right. I got to go sing next weekend. Cover your mouth when you cough. (laughs) But it's great. Yeah, we feel very blessed. Very wow. Yeah. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure having you. I want to continue to put a demand on your gift. So just know that I'm praying for you and thinking about you. you. I had a couple of writers right now I'd love to get you with if you're interested. You don't have to commit to it on the show yeah. here, but sure. man, I believe that your best songs are ahead. Amen. Not behind. Yes. Well, so be it. All right, everybody. Don Moen. God bless. Hey, fun being with you, John. Thanks. And thanks, everyone. Hey, thanks for listening to the show today. I'm blown away with the encouragement and inspiration that every guest brings, and today was certainly no different. If you want even more encouragement and inspiration to take your songwriting to the next level, be sure to check out NCS membership over on our site at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com. We're all about empowering you to become the best Christian songwriter that you can be. And NCS membership is simply the fastest and easiest way to get there. Become the songwriter that you were born to be by joining NCS membership today. I'll see you next time on the Song Revolution Podcast.